I think just the concept of like what differentiates Ukrainian children into like other countries mainly we just get like this concept of responsibility and living separately from parents earlier on so like here people like understand what they really want to do in life around like 25 years old sort of mm. or more sometimes or they move out from parents or like from like yeah. roommates at that time but in our country like if you're 22 if you don't know what you're gonna do it's like <laughs> really <laughs> you don't know you should know <laughs> what about traditions traditions as a kid you have any traditions? We you actually have, have a lot of traditions. But if we talk about, like, basically, if we go back, like, years ago, there is a lot of traditions we have. But in, like, modern world, we don't follow all of them. Mm. But I would say, like, some interesting traditions are, like, for example, Easter. We Pascha. celebrate. Yes, we celebrate Pascha, actually, on Sundays, this Sunday. Yeah, yeah, good people do, too. <laughs> Yeah, and like all world celebrated it like a month ago already, sort of. So like we have huge differentiations in terms of like celebrations. To do the eggs. Yeah. The so egg competition. We color. Yeah, and we have like I don't know I don't know why people don't do that. We have like egg competition where you like color your own eggs and then yep. you like fight them. them. You yes. Crack them. And when I was a kid, I like bought like a metal egg that looks like <laughs> a real one. <laughs> and I was like, I'm a big boss here. <laughs> that was fun. But we also like bake pasta itself. Who doesn't know pasta is like bread with like some ingredients inside of it, which takes like 20 hours. 20 hours. Like, yeah, it's crazy. That's why I, m I made it myself only once. It was mm. the first and the last time I did it. But, <laughs> the, but it was really interesting. And it's very sad that you cannot find it here. Like, I was trying to find Pascha here to, like, buy it on the shop. They don't sell it. So the only way to do it, I, like, found the, kind of, like, baker who does it. And he's going to ship it to you. No, it's in Edinburgh. But it's, oh. like, Ukrainian girl okay. who, woman, actually. But she makes amazing, like, Pascha cakes. Mm. But this is the only way you can get it. You cannot just last minute go to shop and be like, I need it. It's just, like, long term. And we also always go to like church on the past as well yeah. to like use the saint water on the food we eat. Saint water. Yeah, it's just the water from the church. Yeah, yeah, we I know, call it I know. Saint water, you know. But yeah, because I'm Orthodox Christian. Yeah. And my family, all of my family as well, as most Ukrainians are, uh, so we like sort of follow these kind of traditions. And yeah. How do you say? Um... The equivalent of Christ has risen in Ukrainian. Christos narodivse, abo Christos vaskres. Okay. Like there's two options. Okay. In um. In Greek, you say Christos anesti. Okay. Which literally means like yeah, Christ has risen. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the response is like Christos anesti, which is like, indeed, he's risen. Okay. We also have this kind of like saying in Pascha, we say like Christos was Christ, Vaistino was Christ. It's like in a communication, you have yeah. like and all the relatives call you usually and you have the same communication with all of them but it's fun. Like it's sort of bounding. Mm. And actually one thing I also found very interesting, like when I moved here, I saw like that all people like wear like for example like red wedding ring on the left hand. In Ukraine we wear it on the right hand. And I don't know why. I was trying to figure it out as well. And this just says it's like it goes back to like old times when this tradition was born from Romans and stuff. But like it's very weird. Like there's only like Eastern countries, some of them. Yeah. Wear it on the right. Hand. How did you notice that? Well, I moved here and I saw people. <laughs> and I was like, why do you wear it on the left hand? They were like, because it's like, okay. Mm. It's just interesting. I'm trying to notice the cultural differences. This is something was like. Very attentive to, to details. Well, at the same time, when, for example, I go out somewhere and, yeah. like, I sometimes wear, like, ring, like, on the left hand because I don't wear it on the right hand because yeah. it's a wedding ring sort of for me in my head. But people hear, like, us, we are, you married. And I'm like, <laughs> no, <laughs> why? And that's how you understand, like, this kind of thing that are... Interesting. Different. Interesting. Do you think there's anything that um, people in the UK, US, the West misunderstand about Ukrainians? I think one of the biggest misconceptions is like sometimes when 
people talk to me, they don't really understand the concept of like a refugee sometimes mm -hmm. because there is some parts of refugees who actually lost their homes, their income, like everything, and they are fully dependent in the countries they are living right now. For example, they are living in like social housing or something. And some people who moved not from the financial need, but from the sake of like, I just want to be safe and I don't want to like die back home. And the thing is that like we're we're the same people as you are and we have the same intellect and IQ and differences in traditions. Mm -hmm. But generally speaking, we don't we are not like, I don't know, people from Antarctic or whatever. <laughs> so we are so different. So you like don't yeah. understand us. I think this like barrier of understanding of having like a picture of like a refugee as someone who's like um i don't know uh ripped clothing it's it's something that sometimes is very hard to understand for people because sometimes like if you have a look on the like for example cars that ukrainians come out there could be like a mercedes or like bmw or like whatever and some people just don't understand, like, why did you come here if you have, like, all this? Like, it's just not the concept of, like, being ranks to riches. Mm -hmm. It's just the concept of, like, being safe and trying to build up a new world here with, like, zero, with scratch in terms of, like, knowing the country. So, basically, our intellect and what we do is still with us. We just need time to rebuild it here. So, it takes time. And a lot of people don't understand this. Mm. you know hopefully interesting is there anything in the uk or in edinburgh that helps you stay connected or, or feel close to like ukraine even when you're abroad there's actually some restaurant that already were opened by ukrainians there is like sushi place called new Miu, like something like that if i'm right but it's sushi restaurant opened in edinburgh recently there is sushi. Enough, yeah okay uh there is there is some actually other places as well uh when i was in europe and i was in austria i was surprised how much of ukrainian places see there there is literally a place called odessa like restaurant like restaurant odessa really in austria so i think a lot of ukrainians while moving out they're also taking a piece of like identity now it's spreading more like mm -hmm. worldwide on the recognition level but what I really do miss and what is lacking is the mentality. Like there is not that much of a people who would would be the Ukrainians I would usually talk back home. So like I'm not sure whether you have the same thing or not, but like when you move to another country, sometimes when you met like people from your homeland as well, mm -hmm. people think you're gonna be best friends just because you're from the same country, but it's not the way it works. Yeah. Yeah. So uh i think what really likes me is this kind of like a mentality where you go out and you know everyone so like in kiev i could go out even though there is four million people i would always meet someone who i know mm. really like it just works this way and here it's not like just because my character is a bit different to the character that people used to like have here which and is i'm more very straightforward i don't like bullshit like i don't like i really don't like it so i when someone is like giving me something i understand it's a lie i just i'm gonna tolerate i'm gonna be like look this is not true like you're just overreacting or like if someone would ask me my opinion on something i would not be like sure this is something you need if it's a lie like i would just say like nah it's not it's bad like make it different mm -hmm. like, i would just give my honest opinion and People here know that used to this kind of attitude. Mm. And for me, it is hard to adapt to it. That's why I also have a lot of international friends, some Scottish friends as well, a lot of family friends from Scotland who are like older. But at the same time, I think Scotland is a good second home. And mm -hmm. I think government here done a lot of things for Ukrainians to feel comfortable with their support. So I'm very grateful for all that because I, I don't know what I would do if I would not have this kind of a support because you mm. have 
education. You have like explanation of how everything does work. You have basically, I think Edinburgh is very friendly towards Ukrainians. Like mm-hmm. they are very understandable and they are very supportive. I never yeah. heard like anything bad or negative about it or people are always very welcoming and like always want to like get to know how are you doing how's it going how are you adapting so i think this is something that really really flatters me and that i'm really glad there are still some good people in this world mm. i want you to describe a little bit more in depth the uh charity that you mentioned at the oh, very beginning yeah. um mm. to remind people but also tell people a little bit more about w- what where their money would be going to if they could choose to donate <laughs> Yeah. So basically this is a charity organization that is called Tvori Dobro, which means create and make do good deeds. And this is a charity organization that is helping women and kids who suffered from the war in 2022, 2023, 24 and right now and the future. And they're making the fundraising for the needs of those who suffered from the war from uh eastern region. Primarily for like kids and women, mainly for psychological support for those kids who are left without their parents because of the war, and they're making just like supplies of uh, medicine, psychological help, clothing, toys, etc. So basically, first need that you need, and we're gonna probably. Leave the link down below so you can have a look on their website or Instagram or social medias to like see their data yourself so you can be sure that there is like internationally recognized organization. Uh, also, as sort of like giveaway we wanted to do in order to like stimulate people to donate, uh, basically kids, those kids I was just mentioned before, they made like a small workshop where they like done some paintings and one of the paintings and done together and there is a painting with like ukrainian symbolics on it and the name of the organization was like ukrainian flags and everything uh like this kind of a size of the painting so quite big uh that uh was taken from all the way on the car from ukraine kiev to here wow yeah so uh we're gonna be like giving it away for a random donation so from all of the donations that were made starting from today to like let's say a month's time uh we'll just choose a donation that's gonna uh like based on the number system which is going to choose a donation randomly and send the painting wherever whenever you want mm. uh, for you as a bonus can i can i just ask one is that because i have listeners that are kind of in all over the world all over the world so is that just for people that are in edinburgh no, we can we can if this painting got from Ukraine, I'm sure we can deliver it to you anywhere. <laughs> to the to New York City. <laughs> of course. Um and and so this is this is just to clarify, this is an organization that's helping women and children in Ukraine right now. Yeah. That seems like a noble cause. <laughs> well, I'll be very happy and the organization will be very happy if you're gonna help with anything you can or want. 